this video, I will explain how to perform energy calculations based on the heating curve of water. Let's begin with a few key facts about a heating curve. A heating curve is a graph that shows how the phases of a substance change as heat is added. A heating curve also represents an endothermic process since heat energy is being absorbed by a substance. When a substance is heated, it will usually undergo two different phase changes, from solid to liquid or melting, and then from liquid to gas or vaporization. Matter usually exists in one of three different phases, solid, liquid, or gas. However, a fourth phase of matter is possible. This is called the plasma phase. Matter that is in the plasma phase is completely devoid of electrons. Although in the plasma phase matter is in a vaporized state, the plasma phase is not indicated on a typical heating curve. substances. This image represents the heating curve of water where its characteristic plateaus occur at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius where 0 degrees Celsius represents the melting point or point of fusion and 100 degrees Celsius represents the boiling point or the point of vaporization. This is an image of a substance other than water. How do I know this? Well, the plateaus, where one plateau occurs at 70 degrees Celsius and the other plateau occurs at 120 degrees Celsius. Although this substance is not water, the general profile of the heating curve is the same. A cooling curve is the opposite of a heating curve. This is a cooling curve of a substance other than water. How do I know this? Well, the first plateau, which is the point of condensation, occurs at 150 degrees Celsius. And the second plateau, which represents the freezing or point of solidification, occurs at 90 degrees Celsius. The magnitude of any calculation related to a cooling curve will be exactly the same as the magnitude of the same calculation related to a heating curve. For example, the amount of energy released when a substance freezes is the same amount of energy absorbed when that same substance melts. A heating curve consists of both diagonal and horizontal lines. In this illustration, line segment AB represents the solid phase, line segment CD represents the liquid phase, and line segment EF represents the gas or vapor phase. During these points on a heating curve, the average kinetic energy or temperature is increasing. However, the potential energy in the system remains the same. Horizontal lines represent two different phase changes. Line segment BC represents fusion. Fusion means that the substance is melting. Line segment DE represents vaporization, where the substance is changing from a liquid to a gas or a vapor. During these regions, the average kinetic energy remains the same and the potential energy increases. During line segment BC, a solid to liquid phase equilibrium will exist. And during line segment DE, a liquid to vapor phase equilibrium will also exist. Physical constants define how much 
heat energy is required to melt, heat, or vaporize a one gram sample of a substance at one atmosphere of pressure. In the case of water, the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization is 2260 joules per gram. The specific heat of liquid water, which is the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, is 4.18 joules per gram times degree C. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.09 joules per gram times degree C. And the specific heat capacity of water vapor is 1.97 joules per gram times degree C. to the physical constants, the proper formulas are also required. For example, each diagonal line will use the same formula, where Q is equal to MC delta T. At the first plateau, which is located at the melting point or point of fusion, the formula is Q is equal to MH sub F. And at the plateau representing vaporization, the formula will be Q is equal to M H sub V. Now for a quick practice problem. How many joules of heat energy are required to increase the temperature of a 25 gram sample of ice at negative 20 degrees Celsius to water vapor at 110 degrees Celsius. The easiest way to perform this calculation is to place the appropriate formula along each line segment of the heating current and inserting the information. Line segment AB requires 1045 joules of heat energy to increase the temperature from minus 20 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. In order to melt the sample at line segment BC, 8,350 joules are required. Now we must increase the temperature to 100 degrees. This requires 10,450 joules. Now, vaporizing the sample requires 56,500 joules. Obviously, this step requires the most energy. To increase the temperature of the vapor by 10 degrees, 468 joules are required. Now, in order to determine the total amount of energy required, we simply add the products. And the total amount of energy required is 76,813 joules, or 76.8 kilojoules. This concludes my explanation of how to perform energy calculations related to the heating curve of water. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.